Chapter 12 is all about measuring performance of the organization as a whole, really. Um, in Chapter 16, we talked about financial performance measures. We talked about some market outcomes based on stock price and dividends and things like that. But um, most of that chapter was financial performance measures. And then when we started talking in Chapter 11 about um, the responsibility centers and how looking at their individual ROI, um, uh, uh, talk about transfer pricing and how how competing cost centers um, might have problems because you know might have problems demonstrating a good ROI because well they are dependent on other cost centers and things like that. So um, an organization wants to make sure that it's thinking a little more holistically, right? You can't just look at financial performance measures. You can't just look at ROI, but also you can't just like be all six Sigma and we're just going to cut this. We're going to, we're going to keep um, refining this manufacturing process down to the, whatever the six Sigma degree is. Um, and you know what, that may not really actually add a lot of value either. So, so you have to look at a balanced perspective. And so um, this chapter talks about different measurements and perhaps using what's called a balanced scorecard to measure strategic performance. So um, the balanced scorecard, um, as is classic, um, has four main components, financial components, customer components, internal business processes, and learning and growth. So, um, of course, these all are derived from, right, our goals, right? So, so the organization has some kind of a vision and a strategy that they're implementing, right? And so they're going to have some goals. They're going to have some customers in some certain ways that we're wanting to retain them and some processes that we use to meet these other two goals, right? So um, basically to make, to ensure that we're meeting our goals as envisioned by the executives, we are measuring learning and growth, which hopefully will improve our business processes, which hopefully will um, improve how we serve our customers, which hopefully will lead to improved financial performance, right? So, so we have to be measuring all of these guys. Okay. So, okay. Let's talk about what can help us measure these different things. Because some of them sound kind of hard to measure. And some of them are, quite frankly. Um, financial, we've learned a lot about measuring those, right? Internal business processes, there are some methods that can be commonly applied to manufacturing processes. Um, and we're going to learn some of those. Um, customer, so this is, this is not so much the domain of accounting, quite frankly. Understanding what customers want and understanding how to get it to them, that's marketing. All right. So how does marketing measure that? Well, they do a lot of um, uh, testing using surveys. They observe consumer behavior. Um, they send out coupons and see who cashes them in for what. So they're doing, I guess, what you call market research. So that's kind of the domain of marketing. Okay. And learning and growth. Again, um, as accountants, can we come up with some ways to measure that? Um, yeah, probably. But um, I would certainly say that that's more um, in the area of management, right? So um, learning and growth, things like training and developing skills for employees. Um, so could we come up with some kind of employee satisfaction survey? Probably not as good as like the management slash human resources people could, right? So, so you're really talking about these items. These are, these are marketing and management, 
right? And honestly, internal business processes go a little bit to management too. But certainly, um, when you think about internal business processes, and especially in like manufacturing organization, you know, there's some numbers we can count on, right? And we can measure those and report them out. That's that's totally accounting, measuring and reporting. We can do that for sure. Uh, and of course, financial, we can do that. Um, so, so with this balanced scorecard, you're getting more skills in on the performance measurement, not just accounting numbers. Okay. Um, so there's these learning and growth measures. And um, just so you understand that these are not, you know, typical accounting numbers, um, uh, percent of job offers accepted. Um, uh, percent of employees that agree with the statement, I have resources, mentorship hours, uh, employee retention measures. We can, you know, we can certainly measure those things. We could certainly send out surveys as accountants, but typically this is more the area of management, human resources. So certainly in the learning and growth, um, that's something that can be tracked. Um, pro business processes. Now, this is something in some cases, particularly the cost areas and some of these cycle times and throughputs and working process inventory, um, we can measure that. Not so much workstation cleanliness, but um, <laughs> we could certainly... Um, uh, come up with a lot of the numbers related to um, uh, process management because process is definitely something that can be measured and certainly um, inventories, raw material working process, finished goods inventories, costs, right? Um, as a canvas, we can track those guys. And um, customer measures, again, I would suggest that this is more of a marketing area. So in this class, we really won't talk about these kind of things, right? Um, percent of customers that agree with the statement. What's our market share? Uh, uh, how many customers agree with these, right? So, so customer surveys, um, uh, information that comes from the market. So, so customer measures do tend to be marketing people's area. Right, uh, so we won't concern ourselves with that in this class. And of course, um, financial measures, um, we know how to measure these, right? PE ratio. So we've already learned a lot of these cash flow from ops, um, income growth. So that would just be um, a horizontal analysis type number, sales growth again, a horizontal or trend analysis. So, so all kinds of things we can do. Um, uh, this might involve a little bit of uh, customer relationship management, some some kind of CRM outside of the accounting system, or that's attached to the accounting system, so we can see well how many sales from new how many sales products less than three, but that can certainly be added into your enterprise resource planning system and you could easily track that stuff through accounting system. All right, so some stuff accountants track, some we don't, all right? But the thing I wanna emphasize is as management, right? So, so um, this is an accounting class, but probably most of us here are going to be um, more management related than accounting. So understanding where the stuff comes from is important. So in this class, we're gonna focus on the stuff accountants can provide. But as managers, you wanna make sure that you're getting this balanced scorecard or you know 360 degree view or holistic review, you know, whatever it's called where you work. You certainly wouldn't want to base your strategy on just accounting numbers, right? Even though we talked a lot about chapter 16, financial performance measures. Certainly that would not be your sole measure. Uh, you wouldn't want to incentivize people based solely on accounting measures. That's how you end up with financial statement fraud. So keep that in mind, balanced scorecard. 
Um, so a balanced scorecard says that just improving process measures automatically leads to financial success. So some of these Six Sigma lean manufacturing things say, you know, the better we can do this process, the more money we make. Well, you can spend a lot of money cutting stuff out of processes, right, and get to zero defects and whatnot. But you spent so much getting there that you didn't make a profit. So, so it kind of rejects that, right? You don't just, just whittle away at the process. You do probably, and if you want to cut some costs, but it's not the only thing you're here for, right? Um, and certainly, financial perspective is important, right? Um, you do have to hold people responsible for making a profit. Um, and um, so the balance scorecard helps us to um, re-examine our strategies. Right, so so that's what it's about. Okay, so if you look back here um, in business process measures, right? So remember how I said customer stuff belongs to marketing, and um, the learning and growth belongs to human resource and management. Well, internal business processes somewhat belong to management, but some of it belongs to us. Remember how I said we are involved in these guys, right? So that's what we're going to talk about for the rest of this chapter, really. And the first thing we're going to talk about is this cost of quality, all right? So, so that is an important thing to measure, right? And again, like I said, if we're working so hard on Six Sigma-ing our quality, we may have spent a lot of money but not had improved financial for performances. So we want to track the costs of quality. All right, so cost of quality. Now, um, so um, costs from defects are important. They're, you know, you want to track them, right? If you're a manufacturing organization and you manufacture something, you know, stuff doesn't always turn out exactly 100% right, okay? So you're going to have what are called some quality costs. And most people want to not have those, right? You'd like for your products to not need warranties. That costs money. You would like for them to turn out free of defects because when you put out a bad product, what happens? Oh, people aren't going to buy your product again because, oh, that was I bought one of those. It was no good. I'm not going to buy one again, right? So, so they have some pretty severe long-term costs if you have a lot of defects, right? You want to be known as typically known as somebody who manufactures something that's of quality that people will want to buy again or recommend to friends, right? But quality is not free, okay? And that's why the cheap things that break are cheap, and the expensive things that last forever are expensive, right? So, so quality is not free. So you want to track these costs, all right? So these costs, of course, this is accounting, so we're going to categorize things. So um, these costs do come in um, categories, four of them, in fact. Prevention costs, right? So, you know, things that support reducing defects from the get-go, right? Your um, training and your quality circles and uh, stuff like that. Appraisal costs, so these are the costs related to figuring out if something has a defect, right, before they get shipped. So the end of the line, the, the person who tests stuff before it gets shipped, um, the person who inspects things, um, all the costs of that related to that, that's appraisal costs. And we have internal failure costs. So when something doesn't test out, it's bad, and we have to scrap it, right? So the cost of scrap, stuff that spoils, re, or you have to redo it, fix something, right? That's an internal failure cost. So it failed, we tested it, it failed the test, now we gotta throw it out, redo it, you know, whatever. Um, so we have internal failures, and of course external failures. Um, so that's when it gets outside your company, you've sold it, it's left, and uh, a customer gets it, and now you have to provide a replacement. Now you have to um, pay a warranty out of your warranty reserve, um, repair it, 
Um, and of course, there's lost sales, which are pretty hard to quantify. Well, I don't know really how you'd quantify them. Um, that would probably be more of a marketing person's job anyway. All right, so four categories of failure prevention, uh, four categories of, of quality costs. Um, but I guess you could call it failure costs. Quality costs, prevention, appraisal, internal failure, external failure. So there's four, four general broad areas of costs. So here's some example. So once you understand these categories, you can start putting these costs into their little categories, right? So if I want to prevent, I'm going to do things uh, to help prevent anything being bad. So I'm going to have training for my employers so they know how to work the machine better. I'm going to have quality circles where employees get together and talk about how to do this better. Um, uh, some kind of process that controls the activities, right? So some these things are not free. They cost money. That's the cost. Now, an appraisal cost, right? So obviously, you know, the person who puts that little tag with your thing, have you ever like inspected by number 42? That person, the cost of the little tags, the time it takes to inspect it. Um, the machinery, so, you know, some things have to be tested with machinery, you know, um, if you're buying tires, I imagine they test tires by inflating them, so you have to have the machine to do that and make sure they hold the air and all, right, so, so there could be machinery involved, so those are all appraisal costs, right, and of course, if it fails the test, right, so the point of doing this is so that if something doesn't pass the test, we're not shipping it, Right, so if we don't pass the appraisal test, then we've got some scrap, we've got some spoilers, we've got some rework, we've got repairs, right, stuff like that. So, internal costs, and if it actually escapes without, you know, if we don't do very good appraisal, right, if we're not doing a good job at appraisals, um, or it gets past us, and then we've got external failure costs. So those would be lost sales, warranties, complaints, you have to have customer service, more customer service expense, stuff like that. So uh, there's your examples. Once you understand how to sort all these costs, you can make a report, right? You can track your prevention costs and your appraisal costs and your internal failures, your external failures, and you can quantify those. You can show them as a percentage of sales, right? And there you've got a report, right? And you can do it for year one and for year two. And so you can see in this first year, um, we are spending some and we get a 10.3, we end up with an 18%. Why am I not getting that? All right. Oh, okay. We are ending up with an 18% um, quality cost. The next year we've reduced our quality cost, but some of that is because we had quality, we spent up here to train people, right? And now we're spending even more to train people and prevent, right? So the more you're spending on prevention, hopefully, the more you're, the less you're having to spend out here, right? So if you look, in year one, we spent some money on prevention. In year two, we spent even more, right? Um, same thing with appraisal. So we're trying to keep stuff from getting out of here that's bad, right? And sure enough, we did, and it worked. If you look and you see here, year one, when... I guess back here we had no, in previous years, there was no cost. I don't know, maybe we weren't tracking them or weren't doing anything. And so here we had 10.3, and here our external failure is down to only four, right? And um, uh, even though our total quality costs went down, our external failures went down, and we're spending better, I would say, up here to prevent, right? So that's causing these to go down. And this is a lag, right? So if we continued spending in year three, this might go down even more. 
Anyway, so we can report out these quality costs and, and use them. Um, and why would we do that? Well, right, we want to see the financial significance. We want to identify the problems. Um, we want to see where costs are poorly distributed. Right, so we want to think about these costs. Um, what's the limitation to them? Well, um, simply measuring and reporting doesn't do anything, <laughs> right? I mean, somebody's going to have to take this information and act on it, right? Like, oh my goodness, we had, so like in that re this report, you saw somebody said, oh my goodness, this cost of quality, nine million is too much. We've got to reduce it. So they started spending more up here and they did reduce it. So maybe they'll see that and they keep going, right? So, so you, just reporting them doesn't do anything, <laughs> right? And you have to understand that there's a lag, right? Um, and the most important quality cost, lost sales, is something that um, even if you really can measure it, uh, that's tough. You're not going to get an exact, that's for sure. So there's that. All right, so when we come back, um, next tape, we're gonna, next video, we're gonna start talking about um, some of these other performance measures, uh, which are things like your delivery time, your throughput, and your manufacturing, right? So, so we're gonna look at some other process me measures that as accountants we can measure, um, and that as managers you can use. Right, like I said, the rest of the scorecard, so obviously um, the financial performance measures, um, we pick that up in chapter 16. Um, customer measures, that's for your marketing class. Those are very interesting. And um, learning and growth, that's for your human resources class. But these internal business processes, we're going to keep talking about them on our next video.